Hey guys, what's up? It's Rob. Don't don't mind that. I literally just got a tattoo and got home, um, and you know they wrapped it up. But we're making a video about speakers. We do that here. Um, either way, this isn't like a review or like explaining how a speaker works or anything like that. I want to be able to teach you guys what causes a speaker to actually blow, uh, to stop playing, to stop working, whatever you want to call it. I want to tell you guys and explain to you guys, show you guys why that happens. Uh, reason being is you could use this information to you know prevent your speakers from blowing or to know when they're probably going to blow so you can start you know, saving up for uh, a new set. Uh, most of the time, if your speaker is going to blow because of the most common reason, which is distortion, it's one day, it's just going to blow. Um, if you listen to it for extended periods of time with distortion in there, it will blow. When you're using like subwoofers and mids, having like a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of distortion is okay and it's not going to blow the speaker. But if you're fucking pounding on you know, a, a 600 watt sub with 1000 watts you know, continuously, yeah, that thing's going to blow over time. It's not going to be right away. It, it is going to be a gradual thing as that voice coil heats up and as it rubs inside of the magnet and over expands and contracts. Um, now, looking at you know, this speaker right here, you can see that there's the spider right in here and the cone. And the voice coil is actually inside of the magnet right here. There's a little venting hole in the back of some uh, subwoofers and speakers. Uh, this one right here has it. But, you know, when your cone is moving up and down, just like this, your voice coil is also going up and down. With your voice coil going up and down, you know, when it's, you know, playing music going super fast, when you introduce distortion, that voice coil is going to get knocked off center and overstretch itself. So that's what also causes spiders to rip apart and unglue and, and break over time as well. It's because you end up stretching that spider out more than it, it can go anyway. Um, so definitely be careful when setting your gains and like listening to music at a reasonable level. I know that everybody's into this because they want to make the stereo systems louder. Um, but if you buy a $50 set of speakers, it's not going to be anywhere close to that the $300 set of speakers. You're not going to be able to listen to them at the same volume without introducing distortion, uh, which is probably the biggest thing here. You know, working in a shop, I see that coming in all of the time, is people blowing you know their their equipment because they're just overpowering it. Um, so definitely do some research on clipping as well. Um, how you can try to prevent it. The, the easiest way for most people is to set their gains using a multimeter. There's hundreds of videos online about that. I don't have one up on my channel yet. Eventually I will. But um, they're, they're out there for you guys to get that information on um, to, to learn how to properly set your gains or bring it to a stereo shop and they'll set your gains properly. But although obviously I work in a stereo store and you know, people still come out blowing equipment. This happens because the customer is either going on their own and turning up the gains on their own. I've seen that a few times. And then they'll also go on the radio, turn bass boost on, turn the bass level all the way up. Um, all these different types of things, which is going to introduce distortion, um, as well as just listening to the volume at too loud of a volume. With some head units, the, the lower end and most stock head units, about three quarter volume is the max. Although they say they can go up to, let's say, volume 40, I wouldn't push that past volume 30 because you're going to be introducing distortion no matter how good your speakers are. Uh, and that's, that's one thing that a lot of people miss out on. Um, and the second uh, biggest reason why a speaker is going to blow is going to be because of damage. If you have damage to your, surround, uh, to your uh, cone right here, if you don't have a cone, I, I've seen some people their cone blow off and they don't, uh, they're not their cone, their dust cap. Their dust cap blow off and they don't replace it. You know, you're going to be letting dust and debris get into your voice coil and that's going to cause it to heat up and rub against the, um, and rub against the, uh, what's it called, the magnet as well. So that's something you definitely don't want to be having going on. Um, if you have a tear in your surround, that's going to knock your speaker off balance when you know, you're listening to it and it's going in and out you know, with the different frequencies. You're not going to have the same suspension over here if it's ripped as you would over here. So that's also going to knock your voice coil off balance, 
really at the end of the day when it comes to having a blown speaker your voice coil uh, is really everything that's what makes all of the magic happen on, on a speaker um, and there, there's just all of these other problems that you could have um, which would result in a voice coil failure um, that and then something I don't see too often but I have seen and it does happen if you have a speaker that you know, you've been responsible with for let's say 10 years never distorted it once it might blow one day just because you know it, it's a piece of electronic equipment it's not gonna last forever this camera that uh, you know I'm using to, to record it it's like a $300 camera but eventually it's gonna break you know my, my laptop over here I spent over a thousand dollars on it and one day it's gonna shit the bed it, it's you know just with electronics car audio is the same way I'm, I'm sure all of you have had your story about how some expensive piece of equipment you had just broke <laughs> um, whether it be a TV a, a washer a dryer refrigerator something something in your life has broke that you can compare to to your speaker as well and that is something that I see happen a lot of the time it is with amplifiers but if you have a speaker and you have it sitting for let's say two two years you know that speaker is going to get dust on it. It's going to get dust inside of it. So you really do have to go through, clean it out, blow it, blow it out with some some canned air or something like that would be the best way to take care of that. Um, but I hope this video helped you guys. You know, just kind of be a little bit more aware of what causes a speaker to blow. So if you see, oh, I have a rip in my surround, maybe I should fix that. Or if you see, maybe I have my dust cap blew off. Let's get a new one. Let's glue this one back on. Or if you notice distortion coming through your speakers, you know, turn those gains down a little bit. Uh, overall, if you turn that gain down, it's going to sound better, it's going to be clearer, and it, it will be louder than with the distorted uh, signal. Uh, so that's really it for today, guys. I definitely hope you guys did enjoy, and as always, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all of that cool shit you guys do for me here on YouTube. This is Rob, and I'm out. Peace, guys. I hope you enjoy. I got my own wee sucker. So I ain't gotta hit yours I'm talking straight in the